having a good relationship with your supervisor you doing your PhD or during your postdoc is so important for your career and this is what we're going to talk about right now. Now fostering this positive relationship with your supervisor is of course a two-way street. If you have an unsupportive or even toxic advisor then this is going to be of course a very difficult situation for you as the mentee and the best solution is to get out as soon as possible actually because in the end you shouldn't be putting up with that it's not worth it and um, it'll make your PhD experience or your postdoc experience a pretty negative one and nothing is really worth that because in the end even if this is a stressful and difficult period in the best of times um, you should still have as much fun as possible doing these jobs and one solution then would be to change um, advisors within the same program if that's an option or to get out altogether but this is going to be pretty complicated and difficult we cannot talk about it in this video but fostering a good relationship with your advisor starts with picking the right advisor for you so the advice is to basically not do what i did which is, was to show up in some country that i've never been to like the us and start to work with a person that i would never even talked to not even on the phone or nothing i ended up being lucky because there was a nice person and a great supervisor but I wouldn't leave it up to chance if I were to do it again, obviously. So make sure you initiate a conversation with the person that you want to work with. Talk with lab members separately. Many people have their lab members listed by email address. So you could and should contact them before you make a commitment to spend the next four uh, years for a PhD with somebody. I think you should put in all the research that you can to make sure that that person is not going to be a freak, right? I mean, you will find that out. It's tricky to find this out if you email the people in the lab because they don't want to put themselves in a, con in a condition to be vulnerable. But you should at least try to find out if the person is going to be a good person to work with. Now, where the video basically starts in the end is now that you have done the research the best you could, you have a basically good person to work with as your supervisor, most people are, then how do you foster that relationship and make it as productive for you and everybody involved? And you have to understand this relationship is super important for you, for your success, of course, during your PhD, let's say, or during your postdoc, but in many cases, this leads to a professional relationship that can last a very long time, sometimes your entire career. And so therefore it is really worth the effort to think about it and to try everything you can within reason to make it as positive as possible. Now, the first point is communication. This is probably the single most important point that uh, will determine everything else. So in the very beginning, try to find out either by asking directly, by discussing with your advisor and by gauging by whatever means you can what the expectation is in that particular group for communicating with your PI. Um, is it weekly meetings? Is it emails? Is it Slack messages? Is it video chats? Is it making appointments and scheduling things ahead of time? Everybody works differently. You need to find out what applies to you in this particular situation and to your advisor and then to follow that. It's important to get that right because you don't want to overdo it. <laughs> you don't want to inundate your mentor with a barrage of messages and questions. Uh, but you also don't want to communicate too rarely, which uh, has the danger of you going in some wrong direction before um, this course can basically be corrected by your mentor. So it's important to get this frequency of communication just right and well you can do a variety of different things to get this right the first is you could talk to other lab members and see what is working for them or what their experience is but this may not necessarily work for you because they may be for example more or less experienced than you and then also the expectation for communication and frequency of communication and depth will change so the most important thing is actually that you ask your advisor, how would you like me to update you on my progress? And then they will tell you. 
Uh, you could also encourage your PI or advisor to make that in writing, to put this down in writing what your expectation is. I did that um, um, a little while back and I found it very useful because everybody that comes in, they will get this document where it says like, this is how to basically, um, how to communicate with me and how to deal with me. Basically, it's like an almost an instruction manual for how to deal with me as a person. I find that helpful. Also, it was good to reflect for myself <laughs> on what I like and why I like it. And then to also just lay it out for everybody. So it's not secret knowledge. It's just way in the open so that I don't like making appointments that I want every week a very short written report of just some bullet points, which is very little effort on all parts, but it makes sure it makes sure it keeps the communication line line open at all times and regularly. Um, but everybody works differently. Some people want these regular meetings or maybe they want a big meeting once a month, whatever it is. People differ and that this is fine. Just make sure you find out by some way what your advisor actually wants. Whatever that is, make sure that the communication is regular. At some level, you need that regularity in there. And when you are not sure about what kind of questions you can ask your advisor, then also ask them or ask other people in the lab. Should I ask the person how to order things or where I can find the test tubes or whatever? And then you will get an answer about what they, as your mentor and advisor, have defined for themselves as their responsibility and the general topics they are interested in communicating with you. This is something you just need to find out. And this, of course, will depend on your stage. Um, are you a beginning PhD student? Are you a more senior postdoc that comes in having already had postdoc experiences? There is really no substitute in com to communicating with your mentor directly, directly about what their expectations are for communication. Now, another very important point for you to understand in terms of fostering a positive relationship with your advisor is that very often you as a PhD student or as a postdoc have come to the lab because you're funded on some project. Um, this is not always the case, but very often this is the case. So when you are funded on a project, it's very important for you to understand that that project comes with expectations, goals, milestones and deliverables, whatever they're called in the particular language of that funder. And your PI is responsible for that. Now, this is important for you to understand that in the end, your PI has to sort of answer to the funding agency for what this project has delivered. Now, while, for example, in our lab, every PhD and every postdoc comes with a, quite a degree of freedom to do things that they find interesting, you still need to understand that in the end, you need to deliver on that project first and foremost. If you have sort of checked off the milestones on your project, in our lab, for example, you can do whatever you like and whatever you find also interesting. If it's related to your project or not, this is fine. But your first duty is to basically deliver on that project uh, because otherwise, if your advisor sees you're doing something completely different than what you are basically paid for to do in this particular project, that will not foster a positive relationship. And so you need to make sure that you always have that sort of in mind that in the end, your PI will need to answer for this. So you need to make sure that you make steady progress on that particular project. Again, this is of course something you will talk to your advisor about. Maybe your advisor is also not fine with you working on something entirely different after you have checked off basically all the boxes in the project. Again, this is something you need to discuss. And of course, many projects come also with some degree of flexibility, like when you come across something that's interesting, uh, most funders will sort of understand that you did something slightly different from what was proposed. Again, though, you need to check and clear that with your mentor to make sure that in the end they can write a good report based on uh, what you have done. Otherwise, this creates um, anxiety on all parts. If you have a meeting with your advisor or PI, make sure you are prepared. 
in a reasonable way. Don't start looking for things, don't start looking for graphs or don't start looking for data. Have this all ready so that you look organized and well prepared and this will leave a positive impression on your PI and will also contribute to fostering a positive relationship because everybody's busy. If you go into a meeting that means a cost of time for the person you're meeting with and you should be respectful of that and make sure you come reasonably well prepared for that meeting. Well, the next point is you have to understand that your advisor is busy. Everybody is busy with many demands in academic life. There is teaching, research and service and you typically will only see a particular part of that um, in your interaction with the advisor. But you need to understand that there is many other demands on his or her time. Therefore, it's important for you to also be understanding if things sometimes take a little longer or if they forget something, send them a friendly reminder. And it's just to be courteous and to be understanding that there is many demands on anybody's time. Now, as a supervisor, it is also our job to give you critical and constructive feedback on your work. Now, this can be <laughs> a source of unhappiness and can be a strain on that relationship. So make sure that when you receive criticism, that is not meant personally. It's actually meant to improve the project and to lead to more progress. Now, I've been told sometimes when I come at manuscripts that I have thought sometimes I'm a little bit <laughs> over the top in the way I write things. So I have also been dialing this back and I'm more conscientious of how these comments may be received, but in no way were they ever meant personally. They were just sort of, you know, being caught up in the passion for this manuscript, trying to make it better. But, you know, this is never meant personally. Take that attitude that they said something about, I should improve this and that. They really want to help me. So this will also help you foster that positive relationship. And everybody wants to help you and wants you to succeed in the end. Now, if there are major decisions to take in your, let's say, PhD degree in terms of what would be chapters in your PhD or whatever, some really major decisions about your entire stay, then it's not enough to just talk to other experienced lab members, for example, and just assume this will be fine. You need to clear that with your supervisor because, you know, it may be in conflict with project goals or where the advisor wants this to go. Um, so it's basically very important to always check back with your advisor and keep them in the loop so they don't feel like things are going on and basically they've lost control of what's going on. This of course also is in your interest because by keeping them in the loop on such major decisions um, it, it protects you from uh, unhappy surprises later on when for example there is the decision that well this cannot contribute to the grant because of XYZ, then you have basically also protected yourself and you've kept your advisor in the loop and that can also help foster a positive relationship. Now, what's also very important for that relationship is that you are being perceived as an asset to the lab. You are a team player. You help other team members, for example. That always creates a very positive impression with me when people are not just doing their thing, of course, they also need to do their thing well, right? But in addition to doing their project, making steady progress, they are always there to help other people. Uh, that always makes a, leaves a very positive impression. And um, I think it's a, it's a very good way to be a team player, basically. Be a team player, help other people, um, help people I mean, like orient them in, help orient themselves in the new lab. For example, if they're just new arrivals, if there's complex tasks and somebody cannot do it by themselves, um, volunteer your time if you can. And this will feed back positively to you in many ways because also other lab members will perceive you as somebody who's super helpful and then if you need help, they will also help you. It makes the team better, it makes the atmosphere better and it will for sure create a positive feeling of your uh, mentor towards you. And it for sure will foster this positive relationship with your advisor because of your, your advisor, of course, wants the team to work better and to succeed. 
Of course, there can be a trade-off between you being the good Samaritan to everybody, but your own progress in your particular project suffering. That cannot happen. So, of course, you need to make progress in your own work and you cannot sacrifice that for the sake of every, having everybody else helped. Right? I mean, this will not reflect bad, this will not reflect well on you either. So, you need to, of course, look out for your own progress and then if you have time, and people generally do, then be generous and help other people out. Now, do you have to be friends with your advisor? No, you don't. I mean, this is a professional relationship. I, for example, was very good friends with my advisor and I'm sure it made things generally uh, easier. And I also like people in my lab, all, all of them basically, which is the reason why they are in my lab. But it doesn't need to evolve into this deep friendship because in the end, this is still a dependency relationship because um, you will depend on your advisor in many ways. The other way as well, you know, the advisor needs certain work done for a particular project, they depend on you. It's a professional relationship. And of course, if there is a friendship developing, will depend on many factors, will depend on if they want it as your mentor or your PI. Some people really try to maintain or would like to maintain professional distance. Then you have to respect that, of course, this is fine. So you shouldn't force this. If it happens, it's good. <laughs> I think it it's, uh, just makes everything nicer. Also consider that maybe after you are leaving and after this dependency relationship is no longer as strong, basically, or has ended, then you know when that pressure is kind of off, then a more deeper friendship can develop and it can last a long time in terms of collaborations. And of course, it also depends on you, you know, how comfortable uh, you are that will depend on many, many, many factors, <laughs> your cultural background or whatever. And so it's um, always important to be nice and to be friendly and it's good to keep it on a professional level that's productive for everybody involved. But no, you don't really need to become friends. <laughs> so I hope that these points were helpful in terms of creating, fostering or improving the relationship with your advisor and mentor. This thing is very important for general well-being, I think, and it's also important for success of the entire team. So, I wish you all the best. See you.